Hello everyone and welcome back to In My Shed. I'm BC. Just a few quick notes on this holiday. Uh, every shed should have one of these and I call it a whacking block. If you're going to be centre punch marking or driving rivers through or just plain belting hell out of it, don't belt the hell out of the top of the bench. This is a bit of 25mm plate that I picked up years ago, reasonably heavy, and the reason I'm using it today, fall on my sword. I have to replace quite a few of the brackets on the side of the spreaders. The drawings up the back had a little note and I didn't read the note. The drawings were designed around quarter inch frames and I'm using 6mm material. So I've skinnied the frames down a little bit too much. So one side will come off uh, and I've picked the side that's been machined the most. So the bracket is quite thin down the bottom. And um, I use this block to support the work first with a toolmaker's prick punch, a little starrett. I find it very easy to get where you want it. And then I come back with a proper centre punch, open up the hole a little bit. Now I've just dimpled these rivets and I thought I'd do the right thing. I'm using an 8mm solid carbide spotting drill and uh, to try and get it open up enough so the drill goes down where I want it. On these domed head rivets it's so easy to drill off to one side and not do a good job. And I'm really disappointed in how the centering drill cuts. Uh, takes a lot of feed pressure. Uh, it wants to jump out of the centre punch mark uh, quite easily. It could be that it's designed to run an NC machine and I don't have the rigidity in my wrist or something like that. I don't know. I'll have a few more tries but I think I'll be chucking it out and going to a small centre drill. Uh, on top of that, had a surprise packet in the mail this morning. Uh, the note in the letterbox said very heavy and that arrives. Very heavy pig's bum. But what it was, I bought some new old stock from over in America, brown and sharp, half inch head finders. Beautiful piece of kit and b &S is always a good brand. I thought $50 each was a good score. These will see me out to the end of my days and I've never been used. Still covered in the original Cosmon, Lime or whatever you call the bloody greasy shite. Um, one for Graham and two for me, I'm being greedy. But I think that's a very good find. Now I'll swing you around and show you what I'm doing with the drilling setup. But as I said, I may change my mind on that. So back in a sec. That's my setup. The old Brobo wall down drill press. Uh, absolutely fabulous bit of kit. No vibration. It does such a really good job. So got a lead light in behind it. And I'm just freehanding these. It's, it's not a very aggressive drill. It's not going to pick the machinery up and throw it off the table. When I come to drill, if it looks a little bit dodgy, I've always got the machine table clamp, which I find quite handy. But we'll give it a go and see if I like it. Um, if I don't, I'll let you know. If I do, I'll persist with the job. Bye for now. Please like and subscribe. Back again. And I have mixed feelings about using the spotting drill. It doesn't drill very freely, although that could be part of the design. Uh, and I realised later the job of drill was wandering. The spotting drill does not leave a pilot like a centre drill. So without any incentive to go straight, the job of drill just follows the contour of the rivet head. And even though the pan left by the starting drill or spotter drill was uh, reasonably central, I think the rivet heads might not be equal in hardness, as they've had quite a bit of a bloody whacking. And the drill tended to wander quite a bit. Also successfully removed these rivets for their trouble. But me, I'll go back to using centre drills for this job. Bye for now.